Hi, everybody. And I guess you can hear me. I'm a 30-year teacher, principal, middle school, high school. So I'm doing the wrap-up. And in the good new North Carolina New Schools way, it isn't just a look-see. There's a lot of thinking, and there's some work to be done. And um, I love Robin's way. We've saved the work to last. So it, you walk away knowing that you've accomplished something in addition to understanding and to meeting and to networking. Um, you've been talked to a lot. I'm going to do a little bit more of that. And then we're going to work together and spend a little time thinking about and reflecting on, as Robin said, on what these days have looked like, but particularly um, grounding ourselves and penetrating right down to student experience, student engagement, and to what it means to be in school right now, particularly if you're focusing on STEM education. So what we know is that we have to constantly still ask the question, why is STEM important? We talk in past about just the education part of it, but STEM is part of a pipeline to innovation and to workforce, and we heard lots of that from Tony Wagner yesterday. And anybody have a chance to overnight just get into the book a little bit? So you're getting a sense about what he's talking about to be an innovator, to be a youngster and be an innovator, and to be a teacher, and to be treasuring innovation. But we know that we have to mainline STEM literacy. And that's something you know, but we can never start anything without reminding ourselves of why it is this is absolutely so crucial and reminding ourselves why we're focusing on this. This is not the top of the Chinese menu of education right at the moment, in which we're just picking this and it's going to disappear. We are in the eighth year of the mobilization nationally, and it's not going away. The report that I would focus you to is the Georgetown report that has come out from Tony Carnevale and Nicole Smith. Um, it, it's on, you can get it on the web, it, on their site. You can just Google Georgetown Report. It comes actually right up. Why is this report important? I gotta say, I have 6,000 pages of STEM reports on my desk. This is the one that I, the only one I ever recommend. And it is because it answers what is STEM for uh, we as educators profoundly. We as workforce and economic people and worried about and citizenry as a profound way. And it is worth your time. We know that tra traditional STEM has, has, is not going to work anymore. We know in our heart of hearts that it has to be different for our children. You saw that today. But what difference means and what it means to be different is a, ver is a conundrum. And we often in schools are looking for what we call, you know, for a silver bullet, open wide and swallow. How can we do this so that it happens like this? STEM is not going to happen that way. Instead, it's a great invitation for us to engage the way we saw today and to get better at it and better at it and not to go out alone. This is not a time for us to feel the, the burden of it on our own shoulders as teachers, as administrators, as community college folk, as higher education, as business and industry. It is a time for us to collaborate. And Tony's message in this is absolutely crucial. The other thing we have to always keep in mind is that we are talking about attributes of our youngsters. What does a STEM-educated youngster look like? When they graduate, when they, when they go across our stages as, se as seniors, how do we want to be able to describe them? How do they want to be able to describe themselves? How can they understand that they're tooled for, the next, for their lives, regardless of what they pick? And of course, we're hoping that they're in the pipeline, but that they are ready as a citizen in this digital age. And they are going to be innovators, because even if you're not doing that for a living, you're doing it for your life. And that's an important piece in this to keep in mind. When you look at reports like Opportunity Equation, you, you read that this is a moment in time that cannot be squandered. And we hear that a lot. And we've heard that. We heard that in the 60s. We heard it in the 70s. We heard it at the moment when we started standards. As educators, we're always told that this is a moment we can't squander. However, this is actually a moment in time that those of us who have, 
have this color hair will tell you is a moment we can't squander. It is a time when we are leaving behind and gaining value in a way that we have never, we've never gone for value. And whether we call it a digital age, well, we call it an age of doing. Um, it's an age of innovation. It's not predicated on what we already know. It has to be predicated on what we're learning about now. So engagement and incubation in STEM is crucial. The schools that you saw today are learning how to do it. They're learning so that we can all learn. We can't all incubate it, but we're depending upon them on the New Schools Project, on the Texas High School Project, on the Ohio STEM Learning Network, and on and on throughout this country to use their incubated STEM schools to get us somewhere. How do we know, however, what the attributes are when we call a school a STEM school? Every one of those schools you saw today was different. Every one of them calls themselves, in some respect, a STEM school. Nationally, we have decided by default, that if a school decides to call themselves a STEM school, they're a STEM school. No criteria. There's, you know, you could, who knows why you decided to do that, but everybody has taken a step back and said, well, wait a minute. Then you get what a STEM school would get when, when maybe you're not a STEM school. Well, that's the whole point is that if you've stepped up to the plate as a school, called yourself a STEM school, described attributes, maybe you're learning something that nobody else is. And maybe you can add value. Because what we have found in our nation is that we need every one of the STEM schools to be different and to be incubating and to be finding out how best to teach STEM education and to, for, you to, for the schools to know why things work not just that they work. So it's not a problem, and we welcome more and more to our family of STEM schools throughout the country. It's quite important. Here in North Carolina, there's actually uh, um, a list of the STEM attributes, um, I think on the DPI website, actually, <laughs> um, saying, well, this is what we suggest in North Carolina if you're going to be a STEM school. This is some of the, the attributes that we think are important. And by the way, um, you could be emerging them, you could, be, um, you, you could be proficient in them because you're, you've, you're five years into it and you're doing things really well for your own students. Um, not a value judgment, more where are you on the continuum. That helps to have some ideas about, about the schools themselves. The Texas High School Project actually has done this through rubrics and design, and design um, blueprints so that STEM schools become a little bit more elucidated. So this brings up a point. If you're interested, if you're here, if you've gone to school, you work in school, you're part of the STEM mobilization in this country, the thing that's incumbent upon us is to become students of this. So it's not that we're expecting somebody else to do it for us. It is that we are expecting for, uh, to collaborate with others, to learn ourselves and to gain the kind of proficiency and talent and skill so that we can go out and help all of our brethren who want STEM schools in North Carolina, but also who want STEM to come in, um, in a very robust and vital way to the country. And this is, this is ground zero. That's, that's all I can tell you. The thinking behind the STEM schools, the importance of the way that they've been constructed, and the fact now that we're talking about scaling in STEM in North Carolina sets it far apart from all. The great value that DPI, um, the Department of Public Instruction, Rebecca Payne and all of your colleagues have brought to the state in thinking about this um, is absolutely beyond most states that I can tell you that. And uh, in partnership with industry, in partnership with new schools, and on and on. And you saw the whole cast of characters the last two days. You saw what North Carolina has to offer. Okay, so now, what are you gonna do about this? So everybody's talked to you. We've made recommendations. We're handed you a book. We have suggested that you see schools. Um, and very soon, um, probably within about 40 minutes, you're gonna walk off. But we don't think that that's okay. We think that you have to walk off with a plan. 
So let's, let's see what, what we're going to do, and it's in your turn, to actually construct some meaning about what it means to scale STEM schools. So you're all in your, seated in your, your visitation groups from today. I'd like to pose a first question. In, a, in an appreciative inquiry way, I would like to ask you to take the cards in front of you and quite by yourself for a moment, reflect on what was good about what you observed, your, about your observation in the schools this morning. What was good? And I use the term good because you'll define it your way and everybody else will define it their own way as well. And I think what we're going to do for this question, we're going to have a moment of reflection, certainly. But then instead of just sharing with your table and with those who had common experience, what we want on the last question, what do you want to know more about? We across the room probably would love to know what you want to know more about. And we know that new schools would like that. And so in order to best um, respond to that, in the, in the months to come, for all of us, um, whether, whether it's though at new schools or, or your colleagues uh, um, here with you, I think we'd like to hear your voice on that. So what we'd like you to do is to take a moment with the cards again and reflect. What do you want to know more about? And then we're going to ask, we're going to do just sort of popcorn around and just have you pop up. And we have three mics somewhere, so we'll figure out where those are. But take a moment and reflect. What would, do you want to know more about? <laughs> 